This is Marie, World Peas Knits, episode 27. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. So this is a, a knitting podcast, knitting and crochet and sewing, and um, I have a tea corner at the end, and I also have a, a garden update this time. So I just have a lot of stuff. It's been a little while since I've podcast. And um, I just was going to start off by saying, um, so since I've seen you last... I had jury duty, which I was selected to sit on a trial in the jury, <laughs> and I'll go over that a little bit later in the podcast, um, but I did meet this lady named Pat in the jury duty selection. The selection took two days, so while I was there for the first two days, I was sitting and chatting and knitting with this lady who was really cool, and she's a knitter and spinner, and uh, she had an alpaca farm, and She's really cool. So anyway, I'll tell you more about her. She's going to gonna come up in different spots in the podcast because she gave me some things and uh, we did some things. <laughs> so um, and then also I got a new job in downtown Denver. And um, so I live a ways away from there. Just I mean, I'm on in the suburbs of Denver, but kind of by DIA somewhere. And um there's a commute involved with my new job. So I work downtown in um, one of the buildings downtown and uh, I ride the light rail. And so I drive, it's about 45 minutes to the light rail and then another 25 minutes on the light rail to get to work. So I have some knitting time on the light rail every morning and every evening coming home. <laughs> so it is a haul to get there and a haul to get back. But at least I get some crafty time. And I did uh, finish quite a few objects uh, on the, um, the train. So <laughs> so there you go. We'll show you, I'll show you those at the end. But, um, but so I'll kind of talk about it, I guess, as I go along. And um, I, I actually, I do payroll for a living. So I'm doing payroll for a company downtown. So, all right. So, um, to just jump right into what I've been working on, um, my first uh, thing that I have uh, on the needles is in this little deer bag, and I've been working on it on the train. And this is something Pat, the lady from the jury duty, <laughs> gave me. She um, she gave me these needles. So we had met and then I gave her like a project bag and some sock needles because I don't think she had knit socks before or maybe it had been a while I'm not sure but um so I gave her a project bag that I made you know how I made all those project bags <laughs> and so uh, I also gave her a set of um yarn and I believe it was um it was fleecy I don't remember the colorway but it was a set that I thought she would like because she told me what her favorite colors were and then um, I brought a set of needles into her also so that she could um, start a pair of socks because she was watching me the first day knit socks and she was like, I want to knit socks. <laughs> so, um, and then I got her hooked. So, <laughs> so good job. <laughs> and um, she, okay, so, so she saw, she was like shopping for uh, more needles and she saw these needles uh, and they're on this project that she gave to me. And this is, oh, Okay, there you go. You can see it. So they're bent needles like this. Okay, so she um, she actually she sent me this pair. She lives a little ways down the road. She lives down the highway, you know, maybe like 25 minutes from where I live. And she sent me this pair like after I had started the trial. And but before I and then I saw her again later and we hung out. Um, but anyway, so she shipped me this pair. And then I started it while I was... Um, on the train but this is this is kind of how they go <laughs> like this and it's kind of interesting when I first started it I was like oh no I don't know how this is gonna work and I'm using it on um, some trekking XXL 
And then uh, the color is number 618. And I actually saw this color at Loopy U, if you're interested in getting it. But this is how it knits up. So it's kind of neat. Kind of looks more, you know, just blues and greens. I don't know if you can see it too well with these needles. But it looks like that. So anyway, these needles are quite interesting. It took me a while to figure out how to use them. And what I figured out how to do, now I don't know, I was watching a video today to see if they do it a little differently, which they do, than what I figured out. But what I do kind of is, I have the stuff that I'm not working on, it goes kind of around a corner. And then when I am working on it, I slide it to the front of one of the needles. And then I just um, stick the third needle in, and I just knit up this, oops. I have it around the meter. Okay, there we go. Making a hot mess of it, really. And so then I just knit along the side. So it kind of just, I don't know if you can see, but I knit uh, along the flat side. So, um, so it works out. I do like them. Um, the the thing that they were kind of selling them for um, is that you don't lose stitches when they're in your bag, and you don't, and then um, that you only have to have three needles. But it's a little tricky to get started. <laughs> I will say when I had the very first row on there, I was like, oh, this this is very, pretty difficult. But um, it's really, it's just the first row or so. And then the ribbing is a little bit harder because of these the shape of the needles, but I do like them. So... Okay, so the next thing, I'm sorry, I have fuzz right here. Okay. Um, so thanks, Pat. She got me these, and they're kind of cool. And I do like them. At first I was a little, hmm. And she got herself a set, and I don't think she started them yet. She said she wanted to see if I could do them <laughs> and then have me show her how. <laughs> so uh, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if she started hers yet. <laughs> but... Um, as of the last time I saw her, she hadn't. <laughs> so, okay, so that's my one project um, that I've had been working on. And then the next project is in this little veggie bag that I, that I made myself. And this one is um, a project that I've had on the needles. It is uh, Desert Vista Dye Works in the O. Clark colorway. And I've been working on these. And these are just my, um, I'm using signature needles. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking down at my notes. Size 2.5. And they're just a self-striping um, sock. And this is in the O. Clark colorway. I don't know if I said that earlier. But it's like a Christmas colorway. So, yep, I've been working on those. And then, oops, let me see. I'm sorry, but... I just noticed my little notions thing was open. Okay, and then the next thing that I've been working on is in this little owl bag. This is also um, a bag that I made. And I have some Zauber Ball that I've been using. I didn't see the tag in here for it, but it's a purple Zauber, Zauber Ball. So it has long repeats of the color. And I was working on these. I'm at the toe decrease on this set. And I also have a cookie. <laughs> a little, a little uh, stitch marker that is a cookie. <laughs> so it's kind of cute. But it was kind of for Christmas, really. It was the only one I had in that bag. So, so I'm on the toe decreases right now. And then hopefully... Since I finished these other objects that I was working on on the train, <laughs> um, I have I can get back to some of the older whips that I was working on. So, all right. And then the second object that's in this bag that I've been working on is um, Sock Bunny Studios, and this is a another sock that is another vanilla sock. Most of these are all vanilla socks. Sixty four stitches around. So this is the Sock Bunny Studios and the pink is called Electric Florida Flamingos and then the blue is the Sock Bunny logo. 
So I've been working on these also on Knitter's Pride Carbon size 2, 2.75. So 64 stitches around. Um, and then just a vanilla sock pattern. I'm basically doing an afterthought heel where I just do a ribbing of however long I want for the cuff. And then I put in some waist yarn. And then when I get to a, a size that I'm working on, uh, mine is, is just a little bit over six inches from here to the top. For, and I wear a size 12 in women's because I'm very tall. But um, when I get to that measurement, then I start for the decreases on the toe. So, all right. Okay, well that is all the works in progress that I have this week. Because I have a lot of finished objects and other stuff to show. I have a lot. I went. I did a few little day trips out to see a little, uh, <laughs> a few yarn shops and and it, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so the next thing, um, let's see. Okay, so the next thing is this 100 acts of sewing. So I have been making these skirts and um, this pattern I ordered on Etsy, uh, but you can get it actually in some um, yarn and uh, fabric shops. I saw it, I actually went to Fancy Tiger, which is downtown Denver, one Friday afternoon after I got off of work. We got off work a little early one day and I went down there to check it out. And they had them for sale there, but I didn't, I had gotten this earlier because I'd been making uh, skirts. And um, so I made three more of the skirts and then I got some more fabric to make some more skirts. <laughs> so I'll show you the fabric in a little bit, but I'll show you the skirts first that I made. Okay, so the first one I had I had this one cut out on the last podcast. It's just a little light blue skirt for work. And it has like little hearts on it. And I had the fabric in my stash for quite a while. And then the next one, I'll put that over there. The next one is a blue polka dot. And this is kind of blinding. <laughs> but you know, with a little white sweater and, and top or whatever, it's fine. So that's the next one that I made. And then this one, okay, so this one's a little strange. This one has like little ski lodges on it. <laughs> so I bought this fabric a long time ago and I thought, um, I want to make a skirt out of it. I had a lot of it, really. I don't know what I had bought it for or maybe, a, maybe I was making a blanket. I don't know, but it's cute. <laughs> and now I have a skirt. So... <laughs> Okay, so that's the last skirt that I've made. And I've worn uh, those and washed them and ironed them and everything, so they seem to be holding up well. And I do like them. All right, so the next thing I was going to talk about is, oh, when I went to Fancy Tiger Crafts downtown, I was gonna show you some of the fabric that I got. I had decided that I wanted to make some um, uh, project bags. And I was going to make, uh, I wanted some Halloween kind of fabrics for uh, project bags. And so this is what I got. I got this one, which is really cute. And it has like a little dress. I don't know, it's one of their newer Halloween fabrics, I think, for this season. And then I got this to be like the lining of the bag. So I thought that was cute. I got that at Fancy at Fancy Tiger. And then I got, oh, I saw this one fabric that was, now this is kind of different. It's, it's like, it's Halloween, but um, I don't know. They said it was from a Halloween line. Let me find the one picture. Like I was going to fussy cut it. Oh, there it is. It has all kinds of these big things on it. Let me see if I can find the one that I wanted. Okay. Oh, let's see. It's the bat. So I love the little bat. And I thought that would be super cool to fussy cut that bat onto the side of a bag. But this is supposed to be Halloween fabric. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> so, I mean, it has all kinds of interesting things on it. But I thought, well, I got enough for, um, I think, two bats on one side so I could fussy cut two bats onto, you know, which means just, you know, cut around the bat. 
and put it on the side of a of a project bag. And then there's other little guys. Let me I'll just show you the other side. Let's see what's on the other side. So this is the opposite side of the, the fabric. So maybe that house or the cloud or the bunny. Whatever I guess whatever whatever I decide I want to use for the the other side of the fabric, but I really liked the bats. So it's kind of strange that, that that is, you know, Halloween fabric, but it is, I guess. Okay. And then for the inside of that, I got just this little, like, six like stars, like little dots, kind of, and stars. All right. And then, um, and then while I was there, they also gave me, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't bump the table. They also gave me this cute little bag, which was nice of them. So I guess they're handing those out. I told her that I used to live in the city and I used to shop there. I used to actually go to their knit night a long time ago when I lived here. And, um, and I said that I had moved back and she goes, oh, I'm going to give you a bag. So I was like, okay, cool. So she gave me that bag. I had also got a couple of other fabrics from there. Um, for Halloween bags, this one and this one, but I don't really have any plans for them. I have to find like matching fabric and come up with something. I'll show you when I make the bags. And I also saw this Alice in Wonderland fabric that I had seen. I wanted to make a bag with this and then I got some little, um, I don't know, little like card, uh, emblems for the inside. So I thought that was cute. So that's what I got there. Um, I had also, I also went to the Loopy U. Um, so Pat was like, let's go have fun. The lady from the jury duty selection. She's like, let's go have fun one day. And I had been putting up the fence at our new house and working on some stuff. And I hadn't had time to to go do fun stuff and, and check stuff out. And so she said, let's meet at somewhere and knit. And so I said, let's meet at, I was thinking a really cool yarn shop because <laughs> she's never been to the Loopy U. And so I thought I've never been there either, but I knew it would be really cool. <laughs> so, um, so I said, let's meet at this place, you know, where we can knit and we can also buy some yarn. <laughs> so, um, so she was like, okay. And I told her, um, you know, where it was. And I also, I picked one other yarn shop too that was, um, I'm not sure what it was called, but anyway, it was kind of closer than the Loopy U, but, um, but it was in, it was in Greeley, which is the town where we were on the trial together or whatever. We were on the uh, jury duty thing. And, uh, I didn't know if I re really wanted to go back to that town. It was kind of, a bad experience really. Um, but, uh, so anyway, so I said, let's, let's, we could either go to Greeley or we could go there. And she's like, let's just go to the Loopy U. And it was in Fort Collins. So when I got there, um, she had already been there. I got a little lost on my way. <laughs> so, um, she, uh, she had been there and she's like shopping. She already did a lot of damage when I arrived. <laughs> and um, so then we sat and knit and we went to lunch and everything like that. And when I was there, I got some, um, some fabric for some skirts. And I thought I would show you that. I don't have the skirts made yet. I was kind of hoping, oops, I'm sorry to bump the screen. I'm, I was hoping to make some skirts uh, to show you, but I just didn't have time yet. So, um, so I got this, <laughs> which is really cute. And then I got this to make skirts <laughs> and this, oh, I love this. That's super cute. And then this, which I had in a different color. And then, oh, I got this cause I had to have this with the cats. <laughs> I love cats. I have two cats. So the cat, the cat food cans. It's so cute. And then this. And I thought that would be cute for the fall to make a skirt out of that. All right. And then um, I did get, I don't want to bump the table. Okay. 
And I got um, two other fabrics to make um, Halloween bags with while I was there. I got this one, which is really cute. Let's see if I can. It doesn't have, let me see if I can. It has little witches on it. It's so cute. And then this one. They had a lot of fabrics there. So you can look online at the Loopy U and sure, I'm sure you can find a lot of different things. So I will be sewing away <laughs> and I'll show you what I come up with <laughs> when I get that done. Um, okay, and so the next thing, let me just look at my notes, I need to turn the page. The next thing um, that I was going to talk about, okay, is my finished objects. You know, I was going to talk about one thing before I start on that. I, I had um, been watching a podcast. Um, I think it was The Yarn Hoarder. And she had uh, gotten this book. And it's like a magazine, but it's really like, it's put together really nice like a book. I think it's maybe made quarterly. Or three times a year, I can't recall. But I ordered it online making and it has so many really cool patterns in it um i think that susan b anderson was originally um she was the originally the one who showed um showed the book she would she had made these little things which for i don't have any children but if i did they would definitely have these because they're super cute and I got the book because I had saw something that uh, the yarn hoarder had made, Amber Lindemann. She made this hat, and I just love it, and I thought it was so super cute. The only thing she said is that it came out kind of small, and she said that she put a whole nother motif like this on it. So I don't know how many it has on it, but she added one extra one, and she was knitting it again. So I think that I will just make it with the one extra one. Uh, because I have a large head, and I think that that would be perfect. Um, so it does look kind of on the small side, even in the picture, I think. I mean, she said it was on an adult, but she said it was too small for her, and she didn't do the floats tight or anything like that. So I definitely want to make some of those this winter, and I got that, and I was like, oh, that's so cute. And I believe that there is a lot of other patterns in this book that I would definitely use. I saw these little crocheted um, flowers. Let me see if I can find. Which I sometimes will crochet a strand of little flowers and then I'll put it with my headband. So I'll like wear a headband and then I'll wrap some crocheted flowers around my headband. Oh yeah, this sweater that everyone's making. That's really cute and the patterns in here. And then the crocheted headband, oh, here we go. It's just called a chain of posies. And those are super cute. I would, totally would make those, you know, and put them in my headband, like put the headband on and wrap it around there. So I definitely like this book. It was really neat. It has a lot of good patterns in it that I'll, I'll uh, I'm sure, take advantage of. Okay, and so, um, the finished objects that I have for this time are, um, the first thing is a, a shawl that I had been working on. I had um, gotten it out to work on on the train uh, because it it has such long repeats and I it takes like about a train ride to get through one repeat. <laughs> so it's like 25 minutes each repeat. And it's the Magic Cake Ruffle Shawl. And it's by Paula Emmons Feasley. And so here it is. It's super cute. And I had it on the needles for quite a while. Um, just because it takes so long to make um, shawls. And sometimes, uh, like, you put it down and you're like, what was I doing again with that? Where was I at? And that kind of thing. So it took me a minute to, to pick it back up again. And I'll just I'll put it on. But I like to wear them in the fall. Um, you know, as like a scarf, or you could wear it as a shawl, you know, draped over your shoulders, but, um, yeah, so I really like it. There we go. And, um, 
This was done in the colorway Mustache Yarn was one of the yarns, which is the the lighter, this one right here, the light green, and and this one was called Murky Lagoon. There's Mustache Yarns, her name's Stacy, and you can, I think she lives in Texas, and it was on the hipster um, base. And then the other yarn, I don't have the tag for. I think I, it got ripped in half and I lost half of it, so I don't know. Uh, the other one was a blue, and it was called Knit One Crochet Two, color number 683, and that was the blue. And another reason why I kind of let this kind of linger in my projects is because when I was working on it, one of the yarns, had like an a lot of over dye on it so my hands were turning like blue while I was using it and I was like oh you know and so you're like knitting on it and then your fingers are kind of blue and then you're like touching things and so anyway I it kind of got put on the back burner because of the blue that it was turning my hands so when I finished it I was all excited I uh, washed it and washed it and washed it and washed it until all the blue came out and so it's fine now but, um, but I just didn't, you know, it's just a little dirty, <laughs> you know, you hate to like show up and you like put blue fingerprints on your purse and you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, um, so I finished this, I'm going to take it off because it is, um, it is not cold outside <laughs> and I don't need to wear it right now, but it's very cute and I love it. And it reminds me of the ocean. It kind of reminds me of home. I, I come from Northern California so alrighty and then the next thing that I was working on oh is the jury duty socks <laughs> so I finished those because I was there for a week on the the jury and these were um, let's see I started these the first day of the jury duty and I finished them um, at the end so um it's Felici by Knit Picks. Uh, the color num or the colorway is called Bubble, and I have quite a bit left over, so I can maybe make a shorty pair or a pair of fingerless mitts or something like that. But these are the socks, and I love them, and they're super cute, and they actually match pretty well, which I don't always worry about that. So. There you go. So those, um, and I also, for the toes and the heels, I used opal. And then this one is uh, color 5194. And I do like uh, this color. I'll use it again. So that's for the heel and the toe. And so for the jury duty, I kind of thought, you know, I know um, I didn't want to really say what the case is about because it's kind of disturbing, but I thought, you know, it's over and, um, you know, they haven't done the sentencing yet. It will happen in September, the end of September. I think it was like September. I just looked it up. September 26th is when the sentencing will happen for the person that was on trial. And I thought that I would just, I would tell you the name and the city and you could look it up because it's all over the internet. Uh, because it was like a big deal in there, in this, in Greeley. This happened in Greeley. And um, I don't know if this is, you know, I just thought you could look it up if you were interested. Um, but it is disturbing and I don't want to talk about it really, like what exactly happened. But you could read it in the, in the, uh, in the internet, you know, just Google it. And so the name uh, is I-B-R-A-H-I-M. That's the first name of the defendant. And then H I R S I. And if you just Google that and Greeley, G R E E L E Y, 2015 is when the, the incident happened. But you could look it up and, and read about it. It, you know, I guess there's a lesson to be learned from it. So that's the only reason I would even say anything about it. And, um, you know, and it's our duty to go and, and do that. So, okay. Enough of that. I don't want to dwell on that. I didn't want to, I, I almost didn't even say anything about it, but I thought it was like a week long trial. It was kind of disturbing and it was a little upsetting. And, you know, I feel, I feel like it's just something that, you know, 
we need to do, you know, as citizens, you know, go there and, and help, you know, make decisions, which is sometimes not easy. So, okay. So, um, anyway, so the next thing I have, um, another finished object, which is, um, these socks, uh, Serenity Garden Yarn. And they were Deborah Norville collection. And I used the Addy flip sticks on these. Um, the colorway is called Gems. And it's color number 800-4. And I just used, um, I did 64 stitches and it has an afterthought heel. And they don't quite match. You know, the heels are a little different, but they're very warm and very thick. And I was working on these. I think I was almost done with these on the last podcast. So I finished those. Okay, and then the next thing. Okay, so I was watching... Uh, I was watching The Housewives, one of the Housewives franchises. I don't even remember which one, but they were going to Mexico. So whichever set went to Mexico. And I saw that, that one of the girls had this like white fluffy shirt on. And then she had this little bag that she had purchased from a, like an outdoor market. And I was like, I want that little bag. That's super cute. And I thought I could make that, you know, I don't really know. I didn't see like a close up of it or anything like that. It looked like it was crocheted. And I haven't lined my bag yet, but I, I plan to line it when I get the sewing machine out and start sewing again. But um, but I made this, and I brought it to the Loopy U, and I showed it to Pat, <laughs> and she has some ideas for it. So, but this is it. This is the um, this is the original, you know, of how I haven't made the mods that Pat was talking about <laughs> yet. But and I haven't lined it yet. So, and basically, all I did was. I held two strands of yarn together and I did this encore and then this other pink that I had I don't even know what you know I don't know what it is but it was just a, a scrap left over in my stash and I held them together and then I did a heart with this purple yarn and this purple was like a hand spun actually that I spun and I'm planned to line the bag and it, it kind of just has a strap that goes over, you know, and you kind of wear it like, like a little messenger bag. So that's what I saw, you know, on the, the episode. She had it in hot pink, but I, I don't, I don't know that I would wear hot pink, but this is very cute. I liked it. So, um, we were talking about downtown and about how I didn't really want a bag that was open, you know, to wear like that. And, and I'm going to line it. So I'm going to put some fabric inside of it. And then we talked about maybe putting a, a toggle like thing on the top with a piece of yarn, you know, that was crocheted in a chain that went around and shut the top of it. And then um, she said, why don't you do this? Why don't you just pick up with the yarn and knit back and forth a couple of times and do something that goes like this, like diagonally down and maybe goes across like down and across. And it's like a flap. And then you could have like a little button somewhere, like either here that it loops around, you know, fabric or a piece of yarn loops around and, and shuts it. Or or you could just have something at the top and have something with a, like a little toggle up here. So I haven't made the mods to it yet, you know, <laughs> that Pat and I had discussed. But I thought I would show it to you because it's super cute and it was super quick to make. Um, okay, so and then the next thing that we're on to, let's see, is, let's see, okay, I did the crochet bag. Oh, okay. Um, so while I was at the Loopy U, I did a little bit of shopping. And I was just going to show you what I got um, for, for uh, yarn. Um, I had been, okay, I know I don't need any project bags, but... I saw this project and I loved it. I had seen this on another podcast. I can't remember which, maybe like the grocery girls. And it has this plastic like um, in the inside of it so that you can see into it. And I just thought it is the cutest project bag. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat crying. He wants to come in, but he'll just make a ruckus in here. <laughs> so I made, I got this project bag and it's from the Loopy U, but it's, Daisy Girl. And it's just super cute. And so there's the name of it. 
so they had a bunch more of these like in different fabrics and they had more of this fabric so if you're interested that was from the loopy you and on the the wall of yarn I picked out um, this is so cute it's called popsicle is the colorway very colorful yarnings so that's super cute and I'm not sure it is a self striping so I can't wait to see what that looks like and then I got this this is something I had been looking for and it is hedgehog fibers and it's called highlighter and I kind of wanted to get it so that I could put it in a shawl so like stripes in a shawl like I don't know if I would do a lot, a big stripe or, or what, but I just, I wanted it for an accent color in a shawl, like a pop of color. So I had been looking for that and I was like, oh, I saw it, I was like, woohoo, I'm getting that. And then I got this, this is a gradient. This is to make a little shawl or scarf and it will go from one color to the next with large repeats. So this one's cute too. All right, so that is what I picked out yarn wise from there. Okay, and then, okay, and then tea corner. So the next thing I was going to talk about is um, tea corner. So I was, um, when I was actually shopping that day with, uh, with Pat at the Loopy U, we went down to the World Market, and they had this, and this is really delicious. I've made it uh, twice, I think, so far. Pineapple iced tea, and it has larger tea bags in it, so you make like a a tea bag for like a pot, you know, like the whole pitcher or whatever. So, and it's good and it is made with real coconut water. So I don't know how, how that works. I guess there's dehydrated coconut on there. So, but it's really delicious. And then the next tea I thought I would show you because of this whole starting a new job and the whole trial thing, the jury duty. I had had some trouble sleeping because it just is stressful, you know, everything's stressful. And uh, I had, um, I just thought I would show you my sleepy time tea that I've been drinking. So um, this is one of my favorites. It's by David's Tea and it's, um, of course I put all the stickers on it <laughs> because you have to have stickers on tea, but, <laughs> but it's called Sweet Dreams. So. And this one is one of my favorites. I have like a large bag of it. And what I do is when I get, when it gets low, I just refill it in the container. So I've been drinking that. And I also was going to talk about Sleepy Time Vanilla. So I, I like this also. This is my second favorite Sleepy Time tea. So, and I got this from Celestial Seasonings when I was up there one time. So those are my two favorite sleepy time teas. And I also um, had uh, received an order from San Marco Coffee. And I'll just show you as I drink the coffee, because um, if you get a certain amount, the shipping's free. So um, I made an order and this this is the first one that I'm that I'm trying. It's almond cookie. I've had this one before and it was so delicious. And so I thought, oh, I'm gonna get almond cookie again, you know, and I love it. It is, it's one of my favorites. So, and I just put it in these little jars and then, um, oh, and I got this little wooden spoon. This is just what I use to, um, to fill up my coffee with, but it's like hand carved when I was in Canada with my mom. Someone was selling these that he had made them and I thought they were super cute so I use them in my coffee jar. <laughs> All right so the next thing I was going to talk about let's see if I have I hope I didn't bump the table. Oh okay so I was going to talk about just a few more things uh, before we go. So Pat my friend that I met um, on the jury duty um, she let me just get what she gave me. She had an alpaca farm. So one of the days to the trial actually <laughs> she brought it in through security was she brought in some uh, alpaca roving that she brought me so that I could spin it. Now I had asked her the name of the alpaca and I had it on my phone but I couldn't find it. So 
I can't remember what it was called, the alpaca, but when I spin it, I'll tell you the name. It was like fluffy or something like that. I can't remember what the alpaca's name was. <laughs> I'll ask her again, and then when I spin it, I'll, I'll let you know. But she had it um, made into roving, and uh, I'm going to try it out and spin it and see what it looks like. And so it's natural. It's really pretty. It has a, just a little bit of matter in it, um, but... She said she wasn't really happy with the with the processor that she had brought it to, but I think it's fine. I mean, it'll clean right up. You know, I'll just pl pluck the little pieces of... It just looks like little pieces of maybe... Uh, maybe the animal wasn't jacketed or anything like that, but... So, yeah, just a few little things. It'll be cute. I would like to... I'd like to... Um, spin that up and maybe make like a little pair of fingerless mitts or something like that. I don't know how much that'll spin up into, but she's like, I have tons more. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see when I get a chance to spin it, what it looks like, and I'll show it to you. And then, um, she also went on a trip. She's, um, she's moving or no, she's not moving. She just went on a trip to Alaska. I think she's getting a piece of property there to go visit in the summer or something like that. And she, when she went there to look at the properties, she had um, brought me back this yarn. And it's so pretty. And I, I can't decide what I'm going to make with it. If I'm going to do a pair of socks or, or what. But it kind of reminds me of Halloween a little because of the green and, and gray. And I actually was thinking I might want to make fingerless mitts with it. Because it kind of, it, it looks like a, it is a two-ply. It does look like it's, it's not a single ply, but because it looks barber pulley a little to me. So, so, but it is very soft. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to think on it and decide what I'm going to make with it. And also while we were shopping at the world market, Pat was really sneaky and she bought both of us one of these. <laughs> A sheet bag and it's super cute and I thought I would show it to you because you guys get it <laughs> sheep so it's so cute so that is really all I was going to talk about today I have um, a garden update that I'll put at the end and I have a little bit of footage of the loopy you and I thought maybe you would be interested in seeing it so I might put that in here and I also have a little guy that I found that lives in my garden, and I named him Toady. <laughs> and I have some footage of him hopping around in the yard. So I might put that at the end, too. <laughs> so you don't have to, to watch to the end. But if you want to, <laughs> it will have the loopy you and Toady and the garden. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Bye. Here's the garden update. So there's some tomato plants, some little jalapeno plants, and banana pepper. And then the cucumbers are in the front here. And there's like a little toad that lives in here. <laughs> I see him every other day. He's not out today, so. And then the squash are at the end of their season. 
and then this bed has, I'm sorry, there's an airplane going over. This bed has um, the greens in it. It has Swiss chard, carrots on the end, some beets, kale, three different kinds. It has dinosaur kale here on the end, and then it has like a red kale, there's a white kale, and then the curly kale, curly green kale. And then this is the herb box. And there's the rosemary on the end, and chives, and mint, and all kinds of uh, basil. I have to make some pesto later today. So there's the garden update. Thanks for watching. Hi, Toady. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. Ooh. Oh, you're out.